The device node dev PTS that is listed as being mounted as type DEV PTS is also not really a file system. It's the system of pseudo terminals. Remember earlier we came across a device node named TTY something that were the terminals connected to the computer. Well, whenever you open a window that acts like a new terminal, it needs a device node for input and output because that's how Linux communicates with terminals. Well, each time you open a new window, a new pseudo terminal with a device node by the name of PTY something is open to do the job. That's what dev PTS is all about. A couple of the file system types are NFS, which is an acronym for Network File System. Notice that the mount point for each one is a directory on this computer, and in place of the device node is the name of a directory on a remote computer on the network. This is the technique used for mounting one Linux or Unix file system onto another. The disk drive of the networked machines can be addressed just as if they were local. The last entry in this list is an SMB file system, and it's this technique that's used to mount an MS Windows file system onto a Linux machine. The name of the MS Windows computer here is Retro, and its C drive is mounted locally as known as MNT slash Retro. You probably notice the two numbers at the end of each line. They're usually 0 and 0, but in a couple of cases you can see where there are non-zero values specified for them. The first number has to do with a backup utility named Dump. If the value is non-zero, it indicates that the file system is one that should be backed up. The last field specifies the order in which the file systems are to be checked for integrity when the system boots. The root file system should always be number one, which is the first one checked. Then the checking proceeds to the ones numbered two, then three, and so on. After all the numbered ones have been checked, the ones with zeros are checked. Oh, by the way, the program used to examine file systems is called FSCK, which is sort of an acronym for file system check. It can repair any damage to the file system and will almost always repair any damage caused by a system crash that could prevent your system from being booted. However, you may see a message from it that tells you to run FSCK manually which you will need to do as soon as your system finishes booting. It's easy to do. Just log in as root and enter the command fsck followed by the device node of the disk you need to check then follow the prompts. After that you'll need to reboot again. You can use the fs tab entries to mount and unmount things while your system is running. For example, in this table you can see that the cd-rom is mounted as the directory mnt slash cd-rom. The mount command will look in the table for the information it needs so you can mount it this way. Mentioning the name of the mount point is enough to tell it which device node and so forth to use from the table and you can unmount it by using the umount command with the mount point name. But for the CD-ROM there is a special command that will unmount and also cause the CD player drawer to open. Just type eject. One more thing. If you boot your machine and one of the network machines is not up and running it can't mount the remote file system. So you'll need to do that later when both machines are up. You can tell Linux to mount everything in the table this way. You can do this because if something is already mounted it will simply be ignored. But anything in the table that is not currently mounted will be mounted if possible. This command can also be handy when you've added a new entry to the FS tab and want to make sure it works.